Somebody say multiply. Somebody say multiply. Multiply. And waxed exceeding mighty, and the land was filled with them. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply. And it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Python and Ramses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Let me say that again. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. And we are going to stop right there. And I want to talk to you from the topic of multiplication from the short end. Come on, somebody say multiplication, multiplication. from the short end. We can write that down. That is the topic today. Multiplication from the short end. From the short end. Hallelujah. The short end, the short end of the stick is what I'm talking about, but it implies that someone has received the lesser of the deal. Somebody, hallelujah, has found themselves or found themselves at a particular disadvantage in whatever situation that they can think of. Somebody say the short end. And hallelujah, even if I can be honest today and I can be real, can I do that, Marilyn? If I can be honest, hallelujah, we, as we celebrate Father's Day today, hallelujah, I say again, happy Father's Day to the fathers, but if I can be real today, I know, hallelujah, it is a fact that fathers, uh, hallelujah, oftentimes, hallelujah, end up with the short end of the deal. Uh, uh, they are not necessarily recognized, uh, hallelujah, like mothers are. This is not to take anything away from the mothers because the mothers are fantastic. They are wonderful. They are beautiful. And they do an awesome job. But, but there is something about the fathers, hallelujah, that the relationship sometimes with the children is a little bit different. Uh, sometimes they are looked on, even in society, they are not looked on with the proper respect uh, that they deserve. Hallelujah. Somebody say the short end of the stick. Oh, and if I can be honest today, hallelujah, sometimes I feel that way. Sometimes I feel uh, that I get the short end of the stick even with my own children. <laughs> but I want somebody to understand today, hallelujah, that even with the short end of the stick, God can multiply you. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, he can. Hallelujah. And uh, let me come down somebody else's road because some people act like they don't know what I'm talking about. Some of us uh, have found that when we have had the short end of the stick in our lives, it could have been you've been born in a particular impoverished situation where you didn't have money but many people down the block they had money whatever it is maybe it is you hallelujah that feel that you have been looking for a mate or looking for a wife or a husband and other people have received 
received a spouse uh, and you feel that you are have, hallelujah, uh, gained the short end of the stick. Uh, maybe I'm not talking to you. Maybe you wanted that job and you wanted that career uh, and you felt like you have worked hard for it uh, and somebody else got the job that you felt that you deserved. Uh, you, you're somebody, I want to talk to at least, maybe this is not for everybody today, uh, but I believe, there's a, I believe there's at least three people under the sound of my voice uh, that can think of something in their lives uh, that they have, hallelujah, had the short end of the stick. Maybe you have been abused in some fashion uh, and your friends didn't receive that. I don't know what your short end of the stick is. Uh, hallelujah. But all of us have a thorn in our flesh. Uh, oh, if you don't have a thorn in your flesh and I'm not talking to you, maybe you need to turn off the TV, turn off the computer, walk out of the sanctuary and catch somebody next Sunday. But all of us have, hallelujah, received some kind of thorn in our flesh. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to make sure that I'm in the right church today. Paul said, hallelujah, that he had a thorn in his flesh. And hallelujah, he asked the Lord three times to remove this thorn in his flesh. But the Lord said to him, hallelujah, my grace is sufficient for you. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. In other words, I can still bless you even if you have had the short end of the stick. I can still increase you even if you have been born in power. I can still increase you and multiply you even if you didn't get the husband that you thought that you deserved. Hallelujah. So Paul said, I glory in my infirmities. For I am, hallelujah, when I'm weak. I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, and so I wanted to touch that for a minute and touch on maybe at least three people that feel that there is some area in your life that you have received the short end of the stick. Oh, hallelujah. Now, if I can get into the text, it was the children of Israel. Uh, they found themselves in in, in Egypt. Uh, they found themselves in Egypt. Why? Because uh, Joseph was in Egypt. And when Joseph was in Egypt, the same brothers, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus that betrayed him uh, were the same brothers that he brought into Egypt to give them provisions. Uh, but the Bible tells me, hallelujah, that Joseph had died uh, and Jacob and the children of Israel uh, or oh, they, hallelujah, found themselves still in Egypt multiplying while they were there. Uh, Oh, somebody say, we can still multiply. <laughs> oh, Joseph had died. The brother that, hallelujah, had given them provisions. The brother that had protected them had died. <laughs> but somehow, in some way, <laughs> they were still able to multiply because the word says uh, that God brings about increase. <laughs> Who am I talking to today that needs to understand that? <laughs> that no matter what's going on in your life, <laughs> no matter what the situation is, <laughs> no matter what storms are raging all around, Around you, no matter who has passed in your family, whatever it is, those situations cannot stop God from increasing you more and more. Somebody say, I want my increase. Somebody say, I want my multiplication. I need somebody to understand today that God brings the increase. They found themselves in Egypt, Michael. The Bible says in verse 7, and, and the children of Israel, Maureen, I need you to understand that, that it says that they were fruitful. Let, 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 me, let me back up. Let me back up. Let me back up. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 6 says, Joseph died. Jesus. Hallelujah. But then in verse 7, it says, and, and the children of Israel were still fruitful and increased. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Abundant. Somebody say abundantly. Abundantly. And, and, and most, oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry, I, I just want to just talk through this and just try to teach a little bit, but I, but I get excited. I want you to look at all of these, hallelujah, uh, words that, that God puts in verse 7. It says, the children of Israel, the children of God, the children of Jacob, they were fruitful. Somebody say fruitful. They increase. Somebody say increase. Somebody should be shouting right now. Somebody say abundantly. Hallelujah. And, and, and multiplied. Oh, somebody should be shouting right now. And, and waxed exceeding mighty. Somebody should be shouting right now. And the land was filled with them. Even though they had the situation where Joseph, their protector, had died, they still increased fruitful and multiplied abundantly and waxed exceeding mighty. And the land was filled with them. 
Oh, somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, somebody say, I can still multiply. Oh, no matter what's going on with me. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't die. I feel that in my spirit. I multiply. Oh, I feel that in my spirit. I don't know where that came from. I don't know who said it. I'm going to put quotes around it. I don't die. Oh, somebody shout, I multiply. Multiply. Hallelujah. Uh, they, the children of Israel, they multiplied and increased. But here it goes. Verse 8 says, now, but, but there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. Can I break down the text for you for a minute? The king had respect. The Pharaoh had respect for the children of Jacob because he loved Joseph, because he had a relationship with Joseph. But now, hallelujah, there was a new king that came about that did not know Joseph. Oh, hallelujah, you have to understand that every now and again, hallelujah, you have to understand, Chris, that you will be around people in authority. You will be in the midst of kings that don't know your protector. You will be around bosses. You will be around authority figures. You will be around, hallelujah, kings and presidents and, and cops and officials and executive and judicial and the legislative branch that don't know your God. Oh, hallelujah. And you have to understand that when you are around these people that don't know your God, they get jealous of you because they don't understand you. And they try to figure out how you are increasing and how you are getting greater and greater and greater. And they have not caused you to get greater. But you can tell them the only way that I'm getting great is to God be the glory. Oh, somebody shout to God be the glory. And so the king did not know Joseph. He didn't know Joseph. And so he had a different disposition. Verse 9 says, he said unto his people, the king said to his people, the people of, children, of the children of Israel, Jacob's children, the people of God, are more and mightier than we. Yeah. The first thing that happens as God increases you more and more, Michael, hallelujah, is the people that don't know your God, they have to admit within themselves your greatness. Uh, what, what am I saying, Marilyn? I'm saying, hallelujah, when, when God really increases you, it does not matter if they know your God or not. Hallelujah. Your fruitfulness is undeniable. Oh, I feel that in my spirit. Somebody said, just, just throw your hands out and say, I'm undeniable. Oh, hallelujah. The God in me is undeniable. Oh, hallelujah. And so the king, he had to admit, even though he was the person in authority, even though he was the pharaoh in Egypt, he had to admit there's something about the children of God that makes them more mightier than me. And I need somebody to understand today that there's something that's on the inside of you that makes you more mightier than your enemies, that makes you more mightier than your haters, that makes you more mightier than your naysayers. Somebody say, I'm undeniable. I need you to write that in your diary and tell somebody, I don't care what you said about me. I don't care how bad you talk about me behind my back. I'm still undeniable. Oh, somebody say, I'm undeniable. Undeniable. The king had to admit that they were undeniable. I, I didn't want to preach today. I just wanted to talk a little bit. But I, but I feel good down in my spirit reading the text. I, I feel real good down in my spirit. That knows that when you walk into anywhere, when you walk into your job, when you walk into the grocery store, Lady Bolton, that's why the devil always raising up against you. When you walk into the family reunion, when you walk up to the cookout, when you walk into your new office, there's something about about you that's undeniable. Oh, somebody say, I'm undeniable. undeniable. Yes. Hallelujah. He said, behold, the people of the children of Israel are more mightier than we. Jesus. The king has the money and the troops. Mm -hmm. But he said that the children of God are more mightier than the king. I don't know why I got you in my spirit, Marilyn. I need you to stand up for a minute and just receive this word. I need you, 
hallelujah, to understand the power that you possess. Oh, hallelujah, I'm not talking about how much money you have. I'm not talking about how cute your dress is and how pretty your hair is, because it is pretty. But I want you to know that there is a power and a might that's on the inside of you that is undeniable. Oh, I need somebody to tell your neighbor, say, now walk in it. Oh, Marilyn, walk in it. Walk with your head up high. Walk with your chest poked out. And somebody shout, I'm undeniable. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this. Okay, thank you, Marilyn. You're, you're, you're undeniable. I, I want you to walk in that authority and walk in that power that God has placed on the inside of you. Behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and on scorpions, and nothing by any means shall be able to hurt you. The devil shall not have your mind. He shall not have your family. He shall not have your children. He shall not have anything in your circumference. Because God says no weapon formed a against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you God shall condemn shout there and say I'm undeniable hallelujah all right all right he said there are more so he says he says come let us listen to this Annabelle he says he says come let us I'm getting a little hot uh, y'all gotta excuse me come, come let us deal thank you sir come let us deal wisely with them, Lady Bolton. Lest they multiply, read the text, lest they multiply and it come to pass that when they fall out in war, they join with our enemies and beat us. So, 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 so there is a fear of multiplication and defeat. Mm. My God. Yes. Whoa. This is why they're coming at you and the fashion that they're coming at you because, oh, catch this, thank you, Holy Spirit, catch this, yes. catch this. Whenever you multiply, you yes. duplicate. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And if they think that you have power, hallelujah, then everything that multiplies within you shall have power. And so now they're not just contending with you, but they're contending with your multiplication. Glory. And so he says, lest they multiply and join with our enemy and defeat us. Then, hallelujah, you have to understand the reason people come up against you and you don't really realize they're coming up against you is a fear of multiplication and defeat. Yes, yes. Mm. Hallelujah. A, a, a fear of multiplication and defeat. Oh, hallelujah. This is why the enemy is coming at you the way that he's coming at you. Because he knows that if you continue to multiply, his kingdom is coming down. Then you have to understand. Hallelujah. He knows that if you continue to multiply, hallelujah, all of his imps, hallelujah, has to be defeated. All of his schemes and plans and strategies against you are going to come to not taught are going to come to naught. Somebody say that there's a fear of multiplication and defeat. I want you to understand that. That's the first thing that I want you to understand. Hallelujah. That there's a fear that you that you might multiply, that, that you might increase. Uh, the first thing, I want y'all to write this down. Uh, I'm trying to bring y'all into some knowledge of something. The first thing that they are afraid that you are going to multiply in is knowledge. The Bible says, but grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. They are afraid that you are going to increase in knowledge. Yes. Because you are already great. And the more knowledge you have, the more greater in God you become. Yes. That's why we need to make sure that we're picking up books and reading them. Because we need to know and understand everything that the Lord wants to teach us. Somebody say knowledge. Knowledge. Hallelujah. Another thing, they don't want you to grow in, is, is number two, faith. I want y'all to write this down because there might be a test later. Luke chapter 17 says, and the apostle said unto the Lord, increase our faith. 
And the Lord said, if you have faith as grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto the sycamore tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it should obey you. <laughs> they are afraid, Chris, <laughs> that your faith is going to multiply. Your faith is already doing great things, Annabelle. <laughs> but they are afraid that if it multiplies, ain't no telling <laughs> how, be unde how undeniable you are going to be. <laughs> also, somebody say, Lord, and Increase my faith. Another thing that they are afraid of is that you might multiply in good works. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, and God is able to bless you abundantly. God is able to increase you. God is able to multiply you so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. So they are afraid hallelujah, that you are going to multiply in faith hallelujah in good works and in knowledge or oh, somebody say the devil is a lie the fourth thing, the last thing that they are afraid of that you are going to multiply in is wealth. Oh, hallelujah. Can you imagine that your knowledge is intact? Your faith is intact. Your good works are intact. And your wealth is intact. Oh, it's not impossible, baby. Because God is able to do it. He's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all. You can ask or think according to the power that works within you. And I want to prophesy to one accord Christian church. You will increase. You will multiply in knowledge, in faith, in good works. And you shall multiply in wealth. Somebody shout multiplication. Multiplication. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. This is what they are afraid of. I needed y'all to understand it's those four things. Uh, God is able to increase you in knowledge and faith and good works and in wealth. And knowledge and faith and good works and in wealth. Come on. And knowledge, come on, say, and faith and good works and wealth. God is able to increase you in knowledge and faith and good works and wealth. Let's say it one more time. And knowledge and faith in good works and in wealth. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And so, and so the Bible says because of this, hallelujah, they began to put burdens on them. They began to put burdens on the Egyptians because they were trying, hallelujah, to oppress them. And they were trying to bring them down. They were trying to kill them off by putting, hallelujah, heavy burdens on them. And they were doing all of this because they were afraid of the Israelites. And they were doing all of this because they were intimidated by the Israelites. They were doing all of this because the Israelites began to grow. And the Egyptians would be the minority. And this is why they did this to the Israelites. But the Bible says, oh yes it says, it says the more that they afflicted them, and the more that they increased. And I need to stop by here to somebody today to let you know that affliction is sickness or disease. Affliction is oppression. Affliction is some sort of grief. Affliction is is a heavy load. Somebody shout a heavy load. Affliction is the shorthand of the stick. But I need somebody to understand that the more they, hallelujah, afflicted the children of God, the more they increased. The more I need somebody to understand today that they afflict you, the more you will increase in knowledge. The more they afflict you, the more you shall, hallelujah, grow in faith. The more they afflict you, the more God shall multiply your good works and multiply your wealth. If you want multiplication of wealth, get up on your feet and give God a praise. Give God a worship. Wealth will help you bring about good works because God will give seed to the sower. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I said, more they afflicted them. I said, multiplication from 
the shorthand of the stick. No matter what your portion has been, God still wants to multiply you. The Bible says the more that they afflicted them, the more that they, what, 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 what am I saying to you? That, that your affliction does not stop, hallelujah, does not stop your multiplication. The storms of your life does not stop you from growing or multiplying or increasing. Whatever you're going through on today, God is still going to increase you. So tell that situation. Say, I'm not thinking about you. I'm still going to increase. Now, now, something I want you to understand today. That in order to multiply, I knew a little something about math. I think, hallelujah, hallelujah you are math. I think Marilyn is a math genius. I could be wrong, but I think she likes math. But I think when you have multiplication, you can't multiply something by zero. Or if you do multiply something by zero, you're going to get, tell me, Marilyn. Oh, She's a math magician, whatever they call it. Whenever you're multiplying, hallelujah, you are not going to be able to multiply by yourself. If I take this, just say that this is the number five. I can play with it and I can dance with it. I can I can put it here and there and I can I can throw it and it's still what five. a number five. But in order to multiply it, it must declare a level of intimacy with another denominator. In other words, Hallelujah! All of you that are trying to multiply in and of yourself, it ain't gonna work. And so, hallelujah, if we think about, I, I never had a baby from my own self before, but, but, but if we think about a husband and a wife, the only way you are going to be fruitful and multiply is that you need intimacy with somebody else. So, I need to catch this today. Uh, God didn't say that you can be intimate with, I'm not going to say that because we've got children, but you can't be intimate with yourself and think that you are going to produce nothing. Some of y'all are loving on yourself way too much. Much. And coming up empty. I need to stop right there because I felt that deep down in my spirit that wasn't part of my text. Some of you selfish folk are loving on yourself and loving on nobody else. You're not loving on God. You're not giving to God. You're not spending no time with God. And you're coming up empty because in order for you to multiply and increase, you need something other to be intimate with or somebody Intimacy. intimacy. Hallelujah. And so what God is saying, that if you are afflicted, the only way the Israelites, hallelujah, could have become multiplication is that even through their affliction, they had to be intimate with God. Oh, God is the other one. He is the one that can multiply you more and more. He is the one that can add to you. He is the one that can bring you exponential growth. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And so there's three things, there's three things, there's four things. There's four things, and I'm not going to get deep into it because I'm going to get out of your way. But God said, in order for you to multiply, you need me. Oh, let me say it one more time because I've dug that deep down in my toes. In order for you to multiply, you need God. Or oh, somebody shout, I need God. If you don't think that you need God, you need to turn off and turn it off right now. But I'm talking to about four people that feel that, hallelujah, I am nothing without God. I'm talking to about seven people that would believe in him. That's what I move and breathe and have my being. Somebody shout, I need God. I need God. God wants to multiply you, hallelujah, through your intimacy. <laughs> Number one, know him by studying his word. Yeah. Yeah. Study to show thyself approved. A workman need not be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. In order to be intimate with God and to multiply, you have to get into God's word. <laughs> stop being lazy. Talk, stop talking about you don't understand it. I'm tired of that. <laughs> get into the Holy Spirit and have the Holy Spirit illuminate the word of God to you, get you another translation, get you a little King's story book, I don't care what you gotta do, but get into the word of God. Oh, somebody say the word. The word. 
Number two, commit to living for him. Commit to living for God. Romans 14 and 8 said, For if we live, we live for the Lord. Or if we die, we die for the Lord. Therefore, whether we live or die, we are the Lord. I need y'all to catch that. In order to be intimate with God, that he might multiply you. Oh, hallelujah. You have to commit. Commit. Somebody say commitment. Commitment. Commit to living for him. Number three, you have to trust him. Oh, hallelujah, that, that, that is intimacy. Trusting God, a lot of y'all ladies out there, hallelujah, will be able to, 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 uh, to attest to that. Hallelujah, trust is intimacy. Am I right, Annabelle? Am I right, Marilyn? Hallelujah, if I can't trust you, I can't be intimate with you. Hallelujah, I, I can't have a level in a dimension of intimacy if I can't trust you. So the Bible says, trust in the Lord and lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Oh, somebody shout hallelujah. And so in order to be intimate with God, you have to, hallelujah, know his word. You have to commit to living for him and you have to trust him. And last but not least, in order to multiply in God by being intimate with God, you have to prioritize him. That is number four and I'm getting out of your way. The Bible says anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And anyone who loves his son or daughter more more than me is not worthy of me. Uh, we have to prioritize God. That's number four. Number one is what? The intimacy with God is knowing his word. Number two is commit to living for him. Number three is trusting him. And number four is prioritize him. And then you shall multiply. And no matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on in your home, no matter what's going on at your job, no matter what's going on in the world, you shall be multiplied. You shall increase. Somebody say, he shall increase me more and more. Somebody shall more and more. Somebody shall more and more. Somebody shall more and more. More and more. He shall increase you. Multiplication from the short end. No matter what you've been through in your life. No matter how you grow up. No matter if you feel life. You got the short end of the deal. God is going to still multiply you. I can't speak for you if you won't believe it with me. But before I leave this earth, I shall be multiplied. I shall be increased. So enlarge the place of nine tenths and nine habitation. Strengthen thy stakes for you shall wait for it on the left and on the right. Somebody move your hands from the side to side. Say, I shall break forth. Somebody say, I shall break forth. I shall break forth in the name of Jesus. We're done. Multiplication from the short end. Multiplication from the short end. Multiplication from the short end. God wants to multiply you. He wants to give you everything you need for good works. He's not trying to multiply you just so you can walk around looking pretty and you got everything and nobody else got nothing. He wants to multiply you so that you might continue to help those that need help. The reason your cup overflows is that somebody else can get a drink. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, the word today is multiplication from the short end. 